Welcome to the video, guys. Over the years, we have all seen the complete and utter bias coming out of the BBC. I have pointed it out, I don't know how many times on the channel. Whether it be about Brexit or any other matter for that fact, they are consistently against what the people of this country actually want, and instead pander to the lefty liberals on Twitter and within the organisation itself. Well, over the last few days, a campaign on Twitter and other social media platforms, as far as I'm aware, has been gaining massive support to have the BBC defunded, which is obviously something I would like to see. I am no fan of the licence fee and believe it should move to an ad revenue based model to be able to compete with other companies or go bust if it cannot. Let's be honest, the BBC everyone used to enjoy is no longer there, it's just a complete shit show now, which The Express have picked up on here with this article headlining new campaign to defund the BBC sees explosion in support after launch. A new campaign to end the BBC licence fee saw rapid growth in support, picking up 60,000 followers on Twitter alone within 48 hours of launching. Defund the BBC was launched last Sunday by James Ussell, a student at Glasgow University who said he launched a group on a whim out of frustration. The group has been featured on Dan Wooten's talk radio show and currently has 62,000 Twitter followers, which is pretty amazing considering it's only been a few days. I've been on Twitter for months and only managed to accumulate about 4,000 followers, so you can see the sort of support that this movement has. Speaking to Express.co.uk on Tuesday, Mr Ucell said, This was completely on a whim out of frustration for me. It hasn't even been 48 hours yet, and for me, that's striking because I didn't really expect it to go big. I set this up out of frustration on a whim, and I'm really happy with the support I've received. I've got many nice messages from people, which has really cheered me up, and quite a few nasty ones, of course, as well. Well, that's the internet for you. I get them all the time. I actually love them. I'm just a kid in his room with a laptop, frustrated at the way the BBC conducts themselves. Defund the BBC is campaigning for the BBC licence fee, currently £157.50 per household for a colour licence or £53 for black and white to be abolished. In the UK, in order to legally watch or record live television transmissions, you must have a TV licence, proceeds from which fund the BBC's operation. Those caught watching a television without a licence can be fined up to £1,000 in addition to court costs, as we all know. People have previously been jailed for paying this fine, with 50 being imprisoned in 2012 alone, which is why there are multiple campaigns and have been over the years to get rid of the BBC licence fee, and especially their ability to prosecute anyone for not paying it. The pinned tweet on the official Defund the BBC Twitter account contains a link to the site where people can cancel their TV licences. On the licence fee, Mr Ucell commented, It's completely authoritarian, in my opinion. You get threatened if you want to watch TV, and for me, that's just a wild idea in 2020, and I'd 100% agree with that. Though it was a wild idea even before then, I would say. In return for funding from licence fee payments, the BBC is supposed to produce politically impartial content. The BBC's editorial guidelines state, the BBC is committed to achieving due impartiality in all of its output which is complete and utter horseshit because we know that it doesn't do that. Take a look at their coverage over the weekend of what was going on in London. You know, when they claim 27 officers hurt is mostly peaceful or that the woman on the police horse just fell off of it. This commitment is fundamental to our reputation, our values and the trust of audiences. Well, that's why you've lost the trust of audiences because you have no values and your reputation is down in the shitter. Hence why people are so happy to defund the BBC. Now, let me tell you, usually what Twitter says is not what's going on, but this is something I have seen for myself. Even people not involved with politics will happily get rid of the BBC licence fee at any given opportunity. The term due means that the impartiality must be adequate and appropriate to the output, taking account of the subject and nature of the content the likely audience expectation, and any signposting that may influence that expectation. However, Mr Ussell argued the BBC's output is not politically impartial. He asserted their definition of impartiality depends on their interpretation of their values. Sadly, I don't think their values match up to the values of the British people, which is why I have set up this campaign in the hope of making the BBC aware of where they are going wrong. But don't get me wrong, this isn't a reform the BBC campaign, 
again, I don't think personally the BBC deserves any more chances. We want to scrap the licence fee. That is our sole aim, and I will get behind that aim 100%. In the digital age, the licence fee is analogue, really, and the way I look at this is you've got Netflix, you've got Sky, Amazon Prime, Disney+, Plus, all of these new subscription models coming about in this age of digital. I think the government should scrap the licence fee, and if the government won't, the people will. The BBC insists it's coverage is politically neutral and unbiased, which we all know and as I've said already, is a complete and utter load of horseshit. Writing in the Daily Telegraph shortly after the 2019 general election result, Lord Hall, the BBC Director General, commented, around 27 million people in the UK came to the BBC website to find out about the election results. It was a reminder of the trust people place in the BBC. No, it's just because they know you are the first ones who get the information and everyone takes it from you. This is the way it's worked for countless years now. But the fact criticism comes from all sides of the political divide shows to me that we're doing our job without fear or favour. No, the other side only say that you're not being impartial because they keep on losing and you're clearly not doing your job of pushing their propaganda out and making them win. That is the only reason why they attack attack you. Sky, Channel 4 and the rest of them are very vehemently against anything this country wants, as we've seen in the last few years, and they will openly do it. The BBC has to try and hide it because they know they'll get taken to the cleaners by the government or by the people of this country, since they are funded by our taxes at the end of the day. And here is the defund the BBC's Twitter account, in case any of you hasn't seen it, and the top post that was mentioned in that article there. Three simple steps to defund the BBC. Declare you don't need a license, cancel your direct debit, defund the BBC. I will also post a link in the video description to defund the BBC's Twitter and as well the TV licensing thing there. But as I said earlier, I do think this campaign will get a hell of a lot of support outside of Twitter and the internet echo chambers because it is something I've heard in my daily life as I'm sure many of you are. Take a look at any of the examples you want over the last few years in relation to Brexit to see the BBC's undeniable bias against what the people of this country voted for. It's not just that, there are multiple other examples you could cite, but that is one of the main ones and was persisting for the longest amount of time. I mean, the BBC should really know what the public feeling is when, as this video shows you, Victoria Derbyshire has to read out criticism during a BBC News segment, which we'll take a quick listen to before I end this video. Thank you for those. Keep them coming in. Charlotte Andrews says, please could someone ask why we're not thinking outside the box while getting children back to school? In Denmark, they've used theatres, etc., where there's plenty of space for social distancing. These buildings are currently not in use here and our children will still get an education. Uh, Susan in Glastonbury to Victoria, uh, the interview with Conservative MP Tom Hunt was biased. It's obvious that the reason for the failure to open up the schools lies with the teaching unions. I'm increasingly at odds with the BBC over their bias in many areas and find the best way to get balanced world news is to watch Al Jazeera. Uh, Jill is a teacher. You asked the Conservative MP the questions that teachers have wanted to ask. Thanks. And this primary school teacher says, I would like to say as a teacher who is shielding I've worked my socks off during these three months to provide... Well, that is rather scathing criticism from the BBC viewer there, and a pretty funny burn, if I may say so myself. I don't know about Al Jazeera though, you might see Jeremy Corbyn on there soon, it is definitely possible. But as with everything I've been saying, and you can hear from BBC viewers there, the BBC's bias is well known, and many in the country hate it. They need to change their name from the British Broadcasting Corporation to the Bias Broadcasting Corporation, because they do not represent the people of this country. Now as always, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who supports the channel, and my other social media links are down in the video description. If you want to come and support me on Twitter, BitChute, and a variety of other platforms, including my second YouTube channel. As I said, all links are down in the video description. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors. Slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies Mr Verhofstadt against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>